Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm so excited. I'm going to be reviewing the new Pat McGrath Midnight Sun Eyeshadow Palette, the newest one to release. It's beautiful. So if you want to hear my thoughts on it, then just keep watching. If you are new to my channel, hi, I'm Morgan and I am a Pat McGrath Labs fanatic. I purchase and review almost every product that she comes out with and I am so excited to have my hands on the new Midnight Sun palette. So major facts about this palette, it will not be available until this Friday, September 6th online at Sephora and Pat McGrath Labs. It will be $125 and this is described online as 10 richly pigmented shades and 7 next generation formulas highlight line and define the eyes for endless luxury and unlimited looks elevate your artistry with captivating coppers bold bronzes covetable crimsons glowing golds and venomous violets mix and layer to create multi-dimensional effects each hue releases infinitely smooth and blendable pigments with uninhibited blendability so basically how i was able to get my hands on this palette a little earlier is i believe there was some type of a glitch in the system where the palette was available for a few hours and i jumped on it and i honestly wasn't expecting to get it i had figured pat would hold off the orders until the actual release date which I was fine with but yeah it ended up coming in and I know a lot of you purchased it after I told you guys about it so hopefully a lot of you guys got your hands on it as well which makes it even better because I can review it for you even earlier so let's take a look at the actual product more it comes in this absolutely gorgeous cardboard just like all of the other pat eyeshadow palettes this one has a gold and purple theme to it which is really really pretty this is part of what you're paying for the luxury experience that's why i love pat mcgrath you're paying for that experience as well of course it comes in her very heavy luxurious packaging it's very weighty it just has a very simple pat mcgrath logo and you open it up you have a nice big beveled mirror and then it reveals the 10 colors now i will say unfortunately two of the colors in here actually came out so i don't want to turn this over too much or the fallout it's not that big of a deal the eyeshadows aren't shattered or anything I will probably just try and glue them down into the pan but that is something I did want to note because this is expensive and two shadows did come loose so let's take a deeper dive into this palette as you can see there are 10 shades now just looking at the overall color theme of this it's a very warm brown based palette with the exception of a few colors obviously the purple shade is kind of the showstopper over here formulation wise you are getting three mattes three shimmers and four of her exceptional glitter formula. If you aren't familiar with Pat McGrath, she has a very special glitter formula, which some are duochrome, some are not, but they're just super fine glitters. And honestly, the look on the eye cannot be replicated with any other eyeshadow I've tried. She definitely has created a formula that is unique to her own brand. And in my opinion, make her eyeshadows worth buying. I just, I love that formula so much. It's just so super fine glittery without being chunky. And if you've tried Pat McGrath, you know what I'm talking about. It's one of my favorite formulas ever. Her shimmer formulas, especially in this palette, are extremely buttery, pigmented, and smooth. I have found in a few palettes that there were one or two colors that weren't the best of her shimmer formula. You're getting top-notch shimmer formulas in this particular palette. And then her matte formulas I do find to be extremely easy to blend and easy to work with. And I did a look that used that super dark color, and I didn't have any problems with that blending. So so the tones in this palette, something really interesting to me is actually this palette can be quite neutral. It is that violet color that's kind of throwing the palette off, making you think it's brighter than it actually is. If you just cover the violet, the palette is actually quite almost earth toned. So for some of you, this might be a good thing. For some of you, this might be a bad thing. If you're a more neutral wearer, I mean, look how beautiful and earth toned that palette is. And these colors right here can really amp up the look. If you're more of a bright color and you want that fun experience, experience from Pat, you're not really going to get that because it's just the purple. Honestly, without that purple, this palette can be quite warm toned and just very earthy on the eyes, which is a good and a bad thing. And even if you cover these four, I mean, look at that. If you ask me, that's really nothing special. So my initial reaction when I first saw the palette online was I was extremely excited. I thought it was beautiful because I love purples and that purple gave it that wow factor for me. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. And I have to be honest, when I opened it up, 
I was a little bit underwhelmed. It just wasn't what I was expecting. It's much more neutral based and the majority of the colors in this palette can be easily duped, which is slightly disappointing to me. But like I said, when it comes to Pat, you're also putting your money into the experience and owning such a luxurious product, which, you know, gives me joy. So let's talk about the colors individually now, kind of formulation wise, what worked for me, what I really liked and what I didn't like so much. The three mattes in here, I will say, are absolutely lovely. They blended beautifully. They're very pigmented. This brown black right here was quite easy to work with. I think these are a really nice range of colors. I wish maybe like an eggplant color would have been nice in here to kind of pair well with the violet shade. But other than that, I feel like the mattes are pretty well balanced with the rest of the palette. A very unique shade in here is this olive color. It's a very, very deep olive it looks much more olive on the eye than it does in the pan so expect much more green to come through when you actually put this on and it's beautiful the quality of these are stunning i think this color and the champagne color are very easily dupable but the quality is phenomenal on them like this shade i was extremely impressed with how shiny and pigmented it did apply to my lip now the four shades over here i will say there's really only two shades that i would consider to be glitter packed and that's this shade and this shade this color Copper shade right here I would suggest applying either wet or with a glitter glue because I don't know if you can see but it is a little bit more sheer and chunky which isn't necessarily what most of Pat's eyeshadows are like in this formula but honestly all over the eye it is gorgeous and I really think it's a beautiful layering color and I think this shade is very very unique it's like a gray based silver but it doesn't have much of a pigmented base to it so it's a beautiful lid topper it's what I put right in my inner corner such a pretty glitter. If you're a glitter lover, you will love that shade. And these two shades have a more similar formula where they're more pigmented based and they have an even finer glitter to them where it's more so embedded in the pigment rather than the glitters being a little bit more loose in the other two. All are great. Honestly, with every color in this palette, I did not have an issue application-wise. I think they apply absolutely stunning, especially once you know how to work with them. With the glitter shades, I definitely would recommend using a glitter glue. That's how you're gonna get a bam with those eyeshadows. I noticed with this violet shade, it wasn't the best applied with a brush. When you use your finger, it was better. When you used it wet, it was really good. When you use it on top of a glitter glue, that's when it worked its best. So it just depends kind of the effect you want on your eyes. But for me, I love the glitter, so I would definitely recommend helping it out a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Basically, if you use the shadow wet or with a glitter glue, it's going to amplify any eyeshadow. And I just think that the finish of these shadows are so unique that you do want to really emphasize that unique finish. It's quite a pricey palette, but I did have zero issues with every shade. So that in itself helps that value go up because a lot of times I'll do find a few shades that aren't my favorite. Where I feel this palette isn't the best because it is dupable, it's made up for in the fact that you're getting quality. So really quickly, I want to take you into how I got this look. Uh, I would say this palette you could definitely get more warm bronzy looks with, but I definitely took some of the coolest shades in this palette to get a more cool toned lavender kind of look. So the first thing that I did was I took this lighter bronze brown shade right here and I just applied it all over my crease as my original base transition shade. The next thing I did was I took a smaller tiny blending brush. If you're curious, this brush is from Ruffer. It's amazing. And I took some of this black brown. It's not a fully pigmented black. It's more of a brown black, gray black, just not quite black black, which is okay. And I applied that to my outer corner and I did take the time to kind of run it close to my inner corner so that there's a shadow throughout the whole eye in this look and make sure you blend that really well. The shade worked very well for me. And then I took the lavender kind of showstopper color from this palette. I started off with a brush that wasn't the best, used my finger way better. And then like I said, that process, I did end up just using it wet for today. And as you can see, it is such a beautiful color, maybe not as exciting as I had hoped for, but it still is stunning. And then I took this light shimmery shade. It's like a satin shade. It would be very beautiful for bridal. Um, I just applied that to the inner third of my lid. Super pigmented and creamy, super easy to apply. Blended with that lavender shade very well. And then I took this shade, which I think is my favorite in the palette. And I used my finger just to top off that inner third color to really add a fun 
glitter effect to kind of go with the lavender and I really think that opens up my eyes. For my lower lash line, I did want to play with this color right here. It's more of a gold based color and I just applied that to the inner corner of my lower lash line uh, just to add a fun golden pop to the look since everything was so cool toned. And then I took the violet shade and I ran that basically along my entire lower lash line. I used a dry brush at first and then I used a wet brush to make it pop. And then last thing I did was I took that dark brown black and I just kind of smoked it in the outer corner a little bit. And that is how I got this look. I'm absolutely loving it. So for this last part, I wanted to kind of do a little bit of comparisons. So I did get a question right away when this palette was released as to how similar it was to the most recent Pat McGrath palette that came out before this one. This is the Bronze Seduction and if you are a follower of me and my Pat McGrath videos, you would know this is my absolute favorite Pat McGrath palette. So I'm going to take you over to that footage right now. What I did here was I swatched all of the new Pat McGrath palette and this is the Pat McGrath Bronze Seduction which is the Mothership palette that came out before this new one. And I went through and I tried to pair similar colors because I did get a question about how the two compare and there's a lot of the same ideas from the last palette to this one. Like for example, there's a light shade right here there's kind of a light bronzy shade, a more glittery coppery shade. You have a deeper brown, a mid-tone brown, a really light shade. These two aren't that similar. And your darker shades. Obviously, this one's more black based. This one's more plum based. This one's more brown based. This one's more warm based. This one's more warm based. This one's more brown based. So the undertone of all the shadows, if you ask me, are completely different. There is no repeats in that way. But you are spending a lot of money. So I would say eight of these shades are comparable. They're similar, but they're definitely not dupes. So I know for me, I don't feel bad about having both in my collection. And and as you can see, this palette does also have two ones that just don't fit at all. So just so you can see, I feel like the palettes have a similar story in where to use the shades on your eyes, but the shades, in my opinion, are pretty different. So obviously there are some similarities, but I personally find them quite different. Another one I wanted to do was I wanted to compare this shade right here, the kind of star of the show, if you ask me, which is right here. And I wanted to compare it to Synthetica, which came out with the Idols collection. And I just wanted to see how they compare. Completely different. This one's more of a dark base. This one's more of a gray base. This has more of a black base. I will say, I like the formulation of Synthetica better. I do feel like that lavender from the Midnight Sun palette does lack almost a little bit in pigmentation. Nothing bad at all, but it definitely does require a little bit of building up. Nothing that I mind doing, don't get me wrong. But I do think Synthetica is a little bit easier to work with. But as you can see, they still are very different shades. I feel like they could have done so much more with that lavender shade, though, to make it so much more unique. So just something to keep in mind. So if you're on the fence, if you really want to spend that amount of money, this palette is dupable. However, in this certain palette, you are getting the quality. Quality and the experience is what you're paying for here. It's not the most exciting palette, but I do like it quite a lot. It's going to sit happily with my other Pat McGrath palettes and I am so excited to continue using it. So that is all I have for today's video. So what I want you to do, if you have tried this palette out, I want you to comment down below your experience with it. I'm always looking for different opinions on different skin tones, skin types, age, all of that. Let me know everything about you <laughs> and how this palette worked for you. I'm always down to pin a helpful comment. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you are not subscribed to my channel already, I do hope you take the time to do so and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys, have a good one.